Now we'll look at another impact on aquatic ecosystems from humans, and that would be oil spills. So what we want to know here is that oil contains hydrocarbons. That's mostly what it is. And these hydrocarbons are going to be toxic to many different marine organisms. So they could kill them, and that's especially going to be more lethal if they're able to be absorbed through the skin of the organism, or if it's going to enter through the gills, or if the organism actually ingests or eats the oil. And it's directly into its bloodstream, it's going to go into its stomach, and that's going to be really problematic. Let's look at some other physiological effects that we could cite here on an FRQ. We could talk about the decreased visibility, so that oil is going to cover the surface and prevent sunlight from penetrating. We could also talk about oil sticking to the feathers of birds. That's going to limit their ability to fly and to find food and to migrate if they need to. Um, oil can sink to the bottom and basically smother the bottom dwelling organisms. So it could prevent them from getting sunlight. It could make it harder for them to breathe, it could get into their bodies and just be directly lethal. So here's a diagram that I think is super helpful for understanding just all of these different effects here. And so if we look at this diagram, we can see that the oil can reach below the surface. So it can stay on the surface and block the sunlight, but it can also go deeper into the ocean and it can you know, poison organisms like these large fish that may take it in through their gills. It can sink down to the bottom and cover up coral. Beyond just the environmental effects or the effects on the organisms of the ocean, we also have some economic impacts that humans are going to suffer in these coastal communities. So when oil washes ashore, likely beaches are gonna be shutting down, Tourism revenue is just going to plummet. People don't generally like to go and look at an oil spill. They can't really enjoy the beach. And then also the fishing industry. So the people whose livelihoods depend on catching fish and selling them to restaurants, but also the restaurants that depend on serving those fish to tourists. So a lot of effects that are going to occur economically for the human communities along these coastal ecosystems as well. What we want to do now is focus on some estuary impacts. Remember that an estuary is a salt marsh or a mangrove, some sort of uh, basically partially salt and partially freshwater ecosystem along the coastline of an ocean. And so what's going to happen is the oil is going to penetrate deep within the root structures of these very sensitive salt grasses and you know mangrove trees, and it can basically poison the plant, stunt the growth, and the plants can eventually die. And when they die, their root structure starts to break down and that root structure is really critical for a couple reasons. One, it's oftentimes going to be a prime habitat for the breeding grounds of many fish and shellfish. So even if fish and shellfish communities aren't decimated directly by the oil being toxic, their breeding grounds may start to deteriorate. So there may be long-term effects decades down the road on these fishing industries that depend on these fish. Also, when these grasses and when these mangrove trees start to die, if the oil penetrates their root structures too deeply, the coastline itself can start to erode because those plants are so critical at stabilizing the coast and anchoring it with their root structures. So really, really uh, broad reaching effects here of oil spills when it comes to the organisms themselves, human economies, and also just the structure of the coastline itself. And finally, we'll wrap up today by talking about how oil spills can be cleaned up. So the first thing we want to know is the major ways that oil can spill into the ocean. And there are two major ways. One is a wellhead explosion or a blowout. This is what happened with the Deepwater Horizon, uh, the BP oil spill. Basically, the well actually exploded and the oil just started leaking out into the ocean from the ocean floor. We can also have a tanker though, which is a large ship that transports crude oil, usually to a refinery, and those ships can run aground. They can hit an iceberg, they can hit a rock, and this happened with the Exxon Valdez. That's probably the most famous and the largest oil tanker spill. So two different ways that oil can be spilled. And let's take a look here at how it can be cleaned up. Before we do that though, I just wanna point out in this diagram, this is kind of an idea of how that deep water horizon, that deep water horizon oil spill uh, occurred. Basically, you can see here at the ocean floor, there's a wellhead, there's an explosion in the wellhead, and now we have what's called a plume. An oil plume is a really good example of an ape's vocab word that you should know. It's basically a column of oil migrating up through the water, and then it can form an oil slick, which is a big patch of oil on the surface. So plume and slick, those are good ape's vocab words that you want to have down when it comes to oil spills. So the first thing that we can do is we can just I try to use booms, which are these large plastic, almost like floating fences that can try to contain the oil. So we can see that on the bottom here where it says skimming. 
we're gonna try to use a boom, a big plastic barrier to contain the oil, and then we can skim it off the surface or actually try to vacuum it off. So there's ships with pumps that could try to suck the oil off the surface. And that is probably um, the quickest way or the most you know, immediate solution that people start to employ when there's an oil spill. We also have physical removal. So when it washes ashore, it can just be physically removed from the rocks, from the sand. You can scoop it up. You can use detergent and towels to try to wipe it off rocks or clean it off birds or other organisms. And we also have chemical dispersants. And so these are going to be synthetic chemicals that humans make. And then we're going to spray them basically all over the oil spill, oftentimes with a plane, as you can see in this diagram. And the trick here is that they are just going to make the oil break up. They're almost like a soap or a detergent. And so, like I said earlier, and like I've said numerous times, uh, the solution to pollution is dilution. And, and this is a great example of that. The dispersants are just going to, you know, dilute the oil. They're going to make it spread out further throughout the ocean instead of being concentrated so densely in an oil slick. Now, this is helpful for the immediate area. It's going to clear up the water so that sunlight can penetrate and hopefully organisms aren't ingesting the oil, but it is going to cause the oil to spread and sink to the bottom. And that can have effects on the bottom dwellers who are then potentially going to suffocate or ingest that oil there. Uh, and so it's not a perfect solution. Also, the dispersants themselves uh, can be harmful. We don't fully understand their effects. There's some beginning research suggesting some of them might be toxic themselves. And so sometimes, you know, we introduce a new problem trying to solve an old problem that we created. And then finally, oil can be burned off the surface. Um, this is probably not ideal, as obviously we're combusting fossil fuels here, adding a lot of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, but this is a solution that can be employed as well. So for practice of our Q5.2 today, I want you to read this background here on the Alaskan National Wildlife Refuge, the amount of oil that might potentially be harvested from it if it's open to drilling, and then using the information below, try to calculate how long would all of these barrels of oil that could be harvested from this reserve, how long would they last in the United States based on our consumption of 20 million barrels of oil a day?